one of Africa's leading investors and philanthropists. He is the founder and chairman of Hairs Holding, his family-owned investment company, committed to improving lives and transforming Africa through long-term investment in strategic sectors of the African economy, including financial services, hospitality, power, energy, technology, and healthcare. Tony is the chairman of Pan-African Financial Services Group, the United Bank for Africa, UBA, which operates in 20 countries across Africa, the United Kingdom, France, the UAE, and is the only African bank with a commercial deposit taking presence in the United States. UBA provides corporates, commercial, SME and consumer banking services to more than 35 million customers globally. He also chairs Nigeria's largest quoted conglomerate, Transcorp, whose subsidiaries include Transcorp Power, one of the leading producers of electricity in Nigeria, and Transcorp Hotels PLC, Nigeria's foremost hospitality brand. He is the founder and chairman of Hairs Oil & Gas, an upstream oil and gas company whose assets include Nigerian oil block OML-17 with a current production capacity of 50,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day and 2P reserves of 1.2 billion barrels of oil equivalent with an additional 1 billion barrels of oil equivalent resources of further exploration potential. Here's Oil & Gas is committed to creating resource-based added value on the African continent. Nigerian-born and Nigerian-trained Tony began his career as a copier salesman. He spent most of his career life in banking, rising from the position of an analyst to become the CEO of Pan-African Financial Services Group, United Bank for Africa. In 2010, Tony left banking to the next chapter of his life as an investor and a philanthropist, channeling his passion commitment and dedication to realizing the development of the African continent. Tony's investments span a wide range of sectors and are spread across 20 African countries and beyond. Tony is married to Dr. Awele Vivian Elumelu. They are blessed with seven lovely children. A year after earning his master's degree in economics from the University of Lagos, Tony applied to join All States Trust Bank. Despite not meeting the qualification criteria, by a stroke of luck, the CEO of the bank came across his application letter and he was hand-picked to interview. He subsequently got the job. At 26, Tony was offered the opportunity of a lifetime to become a branch manager at All States Trust Bank, making him the youngest bank branch manager in the country at the time. This opportunity influenced his life prompting him to give young employees the same opportunity he was given. Tony's success in this role ignited his passion for investing in the lives of young people. Tony's accomplishments became public when he achieved the seemingly impossible. He was relatively unknown in the Nigerian banking industry when he acquired a distressed financial institution, Crystal Bank, and became its CEO, an action that earned him and his cycle of pairs the endearing nickname, the Cowboys of Banking. Audacious at 34 and the country's youngest banking CEO, he renamed the struggling bank Standard Trust Bank, STB, and pursued an aggressive strategy that catapulted STB from obscurity into becoming Nigeria's fifth largest bank within seven years. In 2005, Tony made history again when he led the biggest merger in sub-Saharan Africa at the time, combining Standard Trust Bank PLC with the older, more established United Bank for Africa, UBA, which at the time was Nigeria's third largest financial services institution. In less than 10 years, he transformed UBA from a single country bank to a pan-African institution with over 1 million customers operations in 20 African countries and offices in Paris, London, and New York. This action sealed his reputation as a business turnaround expert and one of Africa's most influential business leaders. In 2010, Tony left UBA to replicate his turnaround success across various industries. Armed with the knowledge, expertise, and understanding of economic opportunities that exist in Africa, he founded Hears Holdings in 2010. 
Hairs Holdings is a family-owned African proprietary investment company committed to improving lives and transforming Africa through long-term investment in strategic sectors of the African economy, including financial services, hospitality, power, energy, technology, and healthcare. Today, Hairs Holdings and its investee companies employ over 30,000 people while empowering thousands more across Africa. Tony also set up the Tony Lumelu Foundation, TEF, in the same year as an extension of his unwavering belief in the youth as catalyst for Africa's transformation. The Tony Lumelu Foundation has become the hallmark for Africa's sustainable development and the leading champion of youth entrepreneurship on the continent. It leaves its mission, empowering young African entrepreneurs through its flagship entrepreneurship program, a 10-year, $100 million commitment to identify, train, mentor, and fund 10,000 young African entrepreneurs across 54 African countries. Since inception, the foundation has funded just under 10,000 entrepreneurs and created a digital ecosystem of over 1 million Africans. Tony's businesses and foundation are inspired by his economic philosophy of Afri-capitalism, which positions the private sector, and most importantly, entrepreneurs, as the catalyst for the social and economic development of the African continent. He galvanizes support for the foundation's mandate by addressing world leaders at public and private gatherings, as well as serving on sector and issue-specific global, regional and local councils and committees. Some of the boards include the Global Advisory Council of the Harvard Kennedy School Center for Public Leadership, World Economic Forum Community of Chairman, and the Global Board of UNICEF's Generation Unlimited. He was named in the 2020 Time 100 Most Influential People in the World and honored with Belgium's highest national honor, recognized for his business leadership and economic empowerment of young Africans. To celebrate the Diamond Jubilee anniversary of Mr. Tony Lumelu, an event was organized with his wife, Dr. Anwile Lumelu, family members and beneficiaries of the Tony Lumelu Foundation from different parts of Africa in attendance. Leaders of the corporate entities from Nigeria and other parts of Africa, particularly United Bank for Africa, UBA, which has branches in over 20 countries of Africa, also joined in celebrating the Delta State's Nigerian-born global entrepreneur and uncommon philanthropist. The main item on the menu were remarks by all the beneficiaries of the Tony Lumelu Foundation, where they stated how Mr. Tony Lumelu, through the Tony Lumelu Foundation, positively changed their stories from abject poverty to unbelievable prosperity. The beneficiaries who came from South Africa, Togo, Ghana, Bene Republic, Equatorial Guinea, Senegal, Sierra Leone, Liberia and other countries said they have been turned into multi-million Naira business owners, employing thousands of people. Daddy, 10 years ago, I was considered highly risky because I was trained as an artist and I was getting a lot of ideas that the company I worked with thought I was overambitious. I found my way out of the work because I was always pleading for staff and wanted the HR policies implemented. But after training from the Tony Illuminu Foundation with the 5,000 seed capital received in 2021, Papa, today we produce over 12,000 pieces of eggs <laughs> weekly. We have employed six full-time staff and we pay them every month. I'm so excited this morning because uh, finally I got the chance to stand in front of you and say thank you. Thank you for the seed capital. Thank you for the training. Before I got into TEF, I was a local businesswoman. I was producing from home locally and manually. I was opportune, to, and my company was opportune to be present at the Intra African Trade Fair in South Africa, thanks to the Tony Lumelu Foundation. And uh, I call you the Lion of, of, of Africa. I call you the Lion of Africa. I call you my mentor. Um, Menina Farmers, I'm the CEO of Menina Farmers Incorporated. Uh, Menina Farmers started some uh, years back, 2015, uh, when we just had the idea in our head. 
passing around, no office, uh, uh, no business plan, not even attractive to any uh, banks to give a loan. So uh, we applied for the Tony Alemilo grant. Um, we, um, we went through the training. Um, the training alone made us attractive uh, because we learned uh, how to prepare business plan, we learned how to uh, uh, manage uh, human resources, and moreover, the mentoring and the networking, you know, that you are making impact in Africa on behalf of uh, Menina families, the board of director and the staff, I want to extend happy birthday, blessed birthday to you. Thank you. Before I encountered the Tony Elimeli Foundation, I was a 17-year-old confused uni student who had just started a business. It, it helped me to be resilient. It helped me to identify purpose. And, you know, since then, TJL Signature has been able to train over 2,000 young children and women in underserved communities. We've taught them some of the skills that we use in producing our different accessories. We have also been um, awarded by the 2525 awards as, you know, a, I was the youngest recipient of the award because of our contribution to youth empowerment in Nigeria. And, you know, on this 60th birthday of yours, I just wish you a very happy birthday, sir. I pray that you continue in your youthful nature, and I pray that you, re you reap the, um, the rewards of the seeds that you've sown in our lives. Thank you very much. A fashion business, I was selling fabrics in a store and on Facebook. I want to say to you, sir, to all the members of the foundation, thank you. Thank you for trusting in us. Thank you because it always, always gives us resilience because we don't leave, we continue to fight. We're trying to find solution to continue our business. So, sir, thank you and uh, happy 60. I am a beneficiary of the 2019 Tony Elumelu Foundation Seed Capital. Uh, my business is currently employing 21 young men and women who are taking care of families. These are breadwinners. And through the Tony Elumelu Foundation program, our business was uh, gained investor confidence. We've signed new contracts, and for that, we'd like to say thank you, sir. Uh, I would like to wish you a happy birthday, and in my language, I would like to say, Kalevalika. It means may the sun keep shining on you. God bless you. In the year 2019, 2018 actually, we applied for the Tony Elumelu Foundation. We were shocked we got in and uh, we got the grant, uh, the seed capital of $5,000 with which we were able to actually come from an idea stage to a legally registered entity. We yeah, registered our limited liability company. We got our first prototype. We employed a mechanical engineer to make sure uh, our designs were functional and that um, we could impact our girls and have the data to back it up. So fast forward to now, we have impacted 35,000 school going girls that go to school um, every month without fail due to these dispensers that were just an idea, but the Tony Elumelu Foundation bought into us and we got the grant, we got the training. Our message from Dialapad is, you have shown us what democratizing luck can do for wealth creation in Africa, and you have gone before us, and we are going to trailblaze right after you and democratize access to quality education for every school-going girl in Africa. And from the thousands of girls who sent me here with greetings, we want to say thank you so much. And asante sana, buona kubariki, amen. There was also poetry recitation by some talented young entrepreneurs discovered in the creative sector. There was a Diamond Jubilee Anniversary Goodwill message by former President of the United States of America, Bill Clinton, who eulogized Mr. Tony Lumelu's entrepreneurial and philanthropic acumen 
which he advised other well-placed Africans to emulate. Tony, Hillary and I are glad to join your family, friends, and admirers from around the world in wishing you a very happy 60th birthday. From your successful career in business to your amazing work with your foundation, you've accomplished so very much throughout your first remarkable six decades. It's been inspiring for us to see your passion for philanthropy up close and to watch you as you empower a rising generation of entrepreneurs across Africa. So on this milestone, we want to say thanks. Thank you for your friendship, for your good work, for your unwavering belief in a better tomorrow. Have a great celebration today and many, many more. You deserve it, and the rest of us need you strong, healthy, and young in spirit. The vote of thanks was given by Dr. Awile Lumelu, wife of the celebrant. Thank you, everybody here. I, I, I mean, I don't know what to say. We, we, I guess we're all here to celebrate Tony. So he's, if they've said it all, you said it all. There's nothing more I can say. He's, he's what you all say he is. He's what the children say he is. He's, he gives of himself, not just on the office front, but on the home. And he's, I don't know how he does it. I always say to him, I don't know how you do it. As you, you see him in the office, he is so busy, but he will never not have time for us in the house. Never. It is. So, you know, I just want to say thank you very much for, I'm thanking them, but I'm thanking you as well. On behalf of myself, on behalf of the children, on behalf of everyone here, for what you do for each, you make each and every one of us feel like your own personal person. So thank you very much and God bless you always. <laughs> From Biscon Communications, it's 60 hearty cheers to Tony Elumelu. For purpose of clarity, Dark Communications PLC enjoys a robust business relationship with the River State Government. There was never any complaint about any news report or commentary at an AIT or RAPAR against the State Government. That's how healthy the relationship has been over the years. The land in Port Harcourt was ceded to Dark Communications PLC in 2001 during the tenure of Governor Peter Odili. As a responsible corporate citizen, the company has maintained a cordial relationship with the indigents and fulfilled statutory obligations to the local and state government, including payment of a prescribed amount for the issuance of the Certificate of Occupancy. The relationship between Dark Communications PLC and successive administrations in River State has been mutually beneficial. This is from Dr. Peter Odili, Sir Celestine Omeha, Honorable Rotsumi Amechi, and the incumbent governor, Barrister Chief Yesumwike. Indeed, Ray Parr and AIT, owned by High Chief Dr. Raymond Aleo Dokasi, OFR, was the preferred choice of radio listeners and viewers of television programs across the country particularly in the South-South region in the past 24 years, especially since the advent of democratic rule in the country. This is due to the fact that Ray Parr and AIT gave ample opportunity for the ventilation of views from independent observers, different from the always one-sided approach of the government. Successive administrations in river states keyed into this new window to freely reach the people of the state in the nooks and crannies of the country. These programs span political, social, economic, drama, football, fashion and more. Very exciting and productively engaging presenters with years of experience and fresh insight. The game-changing exploits of AIT that became a reference point to emulate by other TV stations was its instantaneous live broadcast of events, which to a large extent was revolutionized by AIT which also introduced 24-hour broadcast of radio and TV programs in Nigeria, which remains till today a remarkably phenomenal groundbreaking feat by High Chief Dr. Raymond Aleo Dokwesi, who, by the way, is a marine engineer 
whose incursion into the broadcasting space of Nigeria has ignited a lot of changes and steady rise in the number of owners of private radio and television stations. Just as Dr. Raymond Dopesi has become a pace setter with incredible innovative ideas, causing a lot of exciting positive disruptions in the broadcasting space, Governor Yesum Wiki of River State is arguably the best governor in Nigeria today, confirmed as the best governor in terms of infrastructural development with a special award by President Muhammadu Buhari. Nigerians, especially from the southern part of the country, have not stopped singing Governor Yesum Wiki's praises for standing resolutely on the side of the emergence of a southern president. This will further help to balance the political equation in the country and bring about unity which is the most needed solution in our journey to become a nation where our diversities can become advantageous to all of us. On behalf of all broadcasters and other relevant stakeholders, and indeed admirers of Dr. Raymond Aleo Dopesi, we appeal to both Governor Yesum Wike and Dr. Raymond Dopesi not to allow politics to spoil the wonderful relationship spanning decades between them. The continued peaceful relationship between Dark Communications and Governor Yusum Wiki will ultimately be to the advantage of Nigerians from different parts of the country, particularly River State, where hundreds of indigents are employed in the Portakot office of Raypar and AIT. On a brighter note that will lead to a quick settlement of the disagreement between the River State Government and Dark Communications PLC, in a telephone conversation with Governor Yusum Wiki, and Chief Usiji Okocha, SEN, former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, MBA. It was confirmed that the matter is now before the River State House of Assembly with a view to reaching an amicable settlement. It was further stated that a total of 55 hectares, part of which Dark Communications PLC building occupies, is involved. The good news is that the River State Government, with the executive backing of Governor Yesum Wiki, has decided to give a window for meeting by both Dark Communications PLC and River State to sort out this lingering problem. One must salute the intervention of Governor Yesum Wiki that has given room for consultation between Dark Communications PLC and the River State Government. The 70th birthday, Holy Eucharistic and Thanksgiving service of the Maestro, Sir Emeka Mukedi, was held on Sunday, the 26th of March, 2023, at the Cathedral Church of Christ, Marina, Lagos. Sir Emeka Mukedi is a music director and coordinator of national and international repute. He is the founder and music director of the Lagos City Choro, as well as the Musical Society of Nigeria, Muson Choir. He is an organist and music director at All Saints Anglican Church, Suruleri, Lagos, and the Master of Music of the Diocese of Lagos Mainland Anglican Communion. He is also the director of Muson Basic School and the deputy director of Muson School of Music. The celebrant was joined by his wife, Lady Afulen Mwokede, and children, Chidube Mwokede, Chizoba Mwokede, Dr. Chidima Onyejekwe Ne Mwokede, Mrs. Nenna Unwere, Nenwokedi, as well as friends and well-wishers. The celebrant, Sir Emeka Nwokedi, coordinated the chanting of Psalm 121.
The epistle was taken by the celebrant's daughter, Dr. Chidimanya Jekwe, from the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 to 8. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel reading was taken by Rev. Dr. Olua Shenwadeyemi from the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 34. In his sermon, Rev. Canon Tony Ajiro started with prayers and congratulatory messages for the celebrant and his family. He then spoke elaborately on youthfulness and old age with reference from the book of Ecclesiastes. It is a time to look back, as the Bible says in the book of Matthew, and if you're coming with your offering, and remember that one has ought against you, drop your offering, go settle, and come back. It's a privilege you have at this point of life to look back, make amends, travel in some direction that you probably didn't have the time to travel. It's time to spend more time with your dear wife, with the children and the grandchildren. It's time to serve God more, to give more and more to Him. I know I speak the mind of this congregation in saying congratulations again, but remember, Remember, you are now a senior citizen. Much more will be expected from you. And the Lord will grant you grace. So to do in Jesus' name. Amen. The Eucharistic prayer was led by Reverend Henry Moore before the Holy Communion was administered amidst rendition of melodious and soul-lifting hymns by the choir. There was a special thanksgiving session which started with the celebrant and his family, who were joined by friends and well-wishers. The Lord has become my strength. This is the day that the Lord, the Lord has made. Glory, hallelujah. Help them to rejoice in the Lord. This is the very day. Lord. The service also featured a super melodious birthday mini concert by the Lagos City Choral and the Muson Choir, both of which he pioneered. The first rendition was by the celebrant, Sir Emeka Mugede, and his children.
The celebrant then demonstrated his mastery of the art of music as he directed the entire concert. The service was brought to an end after the benediction and hallelujah chorus. From Biscon Communications, its 70 hearty cheers to music maestro, Sir Emeka Mwokedi. The 23rd Legends of Nollywood Economic Summit, titled A Day with the Legends of Nollywood, was held on Thursday, the 9th of March, 2023, at the State Treasury Office Resource Center, Alausai Keja. Discussions centered around the theme, empowering the Nigerian theme industry and sub-theme, actualizing your resources under various topics. It all started with the National Anthem, which was led by Ms. Biodun Inola. Notable personalities at the event were the chief host, Mr. Polo Basile, and wife, Mrs. Chibuzo Polo Basile. Honorable Samuel Gube, Lagos State Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budget. Prince Bissio Latilo, the chairman and CEO of Biscon Communications. Mrs. Bukola Agbaminoja, Executive Secretary, Lagos State Fame and Video Census Board. Ambassador Dr. Queen Blessing Ibi Yinosa. Dr. Victor Okai. President, Directors Guild of Nigeria. In the opening speech, the host, Mr. Polo Basile, gave an overview of the event as a talk fest for the actualization of resources that abound in the fame industry. The reason why we are here is not far-fetched. I've observed from time and I watch how my people live in penury, how the average artist, the average production home, the average director and producer complains every day. And we sat down, most of us, to extray it. And they did say that they've not had um, an encouraging involvement of government in a field of play. And I went further to do certain research. I also found out that government, from time to time, they do lip service to the things they do for us. But be that as it may, it is also true to fact that um, our members do not know how to do business. We do not know how to actualize our resources. We do not know how to bring in people who have money to invest in us. The only thing we know how to do is to do show. 
We've forgotten that the word is show business. There's a show and there's a business in it. And therefore, it became pertinent for us to do this forum, this business summit, so that we can bring all, everybody together to rub minds together to see how we can move it from point A to point B. But then, in the process of doing this, we know that there are some industries or some parasitas we must bring in to actually capture what we need to do. Father of the day, Apostle Anselm Madubuko, who gave a brief word of exhortation, emphasized on how much God is needed, especially at this time where things are getting tougher. He ended in a brief scripture reading and prayers. The Bible tells us that we must remember the Lord our God, for He is the one that gives us power to get wealth. Everybody wants to prosper, even the devil. So it's not wrong to have that as an ambition. It's not wrong at all. But what is important is how you go about it. I beg of you, put God first. Jesus wants to bless you, but he also wants the blessing to own you. He's a jealous God. And I promise you, when you truly put him first, you'll be amazed at how doors will open. And I pray for you. That unexpected doors will open for you. Amen. That no longer will you sweat to eat. Amen. Don't be happy that you sweat to eat. Let grace feed you. Amen. Let God feed you. Amen. A little walk, you have a great harvest. Amen. Little effort will bring plenty results. Amen. That's your next level. In his keynote speech, the Lagos State Honorable Commission for Economic Planning and Budget, Honorable Samuel E. Gube, among other things, gave an elaborate speech on the theme, with emphasis on the need to maximize the economic potentials of Nollywood as an economic driver. If you keep on complaining, complain does not have in itself the language of seizing opportunity. Uh, the people who seize opportunity are people who are observing opportunity. Uh, that is why the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that if the children of Israel were mindful of where they were coming from, they would have had opportunity to return, which means that your opportunities will always come in the areas of your mindfulness. But if in the fullness of your mind all you see is your complaint, you will not find opportunity in a complaining mind you will always find opportunity in the eyes that see opportunity. It's by acknowledging what you have that what you have will become established. If you say you do not have, then even that which you have will become useless in your own hands. So it's always important that you figure out what you have and trade with what you have. He also spoke on how Lagos is maximizing its resources and human capacity to its advantage. This government, we had a meeting with some of your um, leads, and you asked for two things. I was surprised and I was excited about it. You asked for more training because you needed increased skills in your industry, and then you asked for infrastructure. Um, today we are doing both, and I will talk about that. I know you also need money, which we respond to from time to time, but what challenges us the most is for you to be able to have money on a sustainable basis. Because government is not a bank. You cannot run an entire industry on grants, so we must figure it out. Um, you cannot run an entire industry on low interest loan if the, if the ecosystem doesn't have a low interest loan. So you must figure out how to run the industry successfully despite the situations um, which we face, which we must conquer as a people. The Executive Secretary of the Lagos State Fame and Video Census Board, Mrs. Bukola Agbaminoja, also shared her thoughts on the plans for the Nigerian fame industry. This investment is not for marrying new wives, as earlier stated, it's not for buying new cars. It's not for taking up new ship transit items. It's to be put back into the industry. Let's begin to change the narrative. 
the narrative with this investment by the state government. Also coming up is the frame city. This is a project of over 100 hectares of land in Nigeria, Ekbe. We call it the frame city, and my, my honorable commissioner already said it's a media city. So expanding it beyond the filmmakers, that's beautiful. So it's for all creatives. So the film city is coming up and presently undergoing infrastructural upgrade. Also in abundance is the numerous capacity building programs for our youth, which brought about the partnership with different creative academies, witnessing co-sponsorship of over 420 or thousand witnessing full sponsorship of over 4,260 young graduates in filmmaking and courses like directing, directing, cinematography, lighting, etc. All every genre of the film market was taught and is being taught by this academy. Mr. Mahmoud Ali Balogun, Chairman, AVRS, gave a speech on royalties. Right? AVRS was established in 2013, and um, were licensed by government, the NCC, the Nigeria Corporate Commission, representing the Federal Ministry of Justice to represent filmmakers in the process of collecting royalties on their works. I can see there is violence because this is money, right? It's nice, right? So, and it involved the entire industry, the representatives of guilds were involved in setting up AVRS. Who does AVRS concern? AVRS concerns the producer. If I produce a film, right, or put up a television program, either drama, documentary, whatever, you, even magazine programs, right, then if you are a director, right, of a movie or a drama series, or you are a lead actor, I'm using actor in the homo sapien sense, right? A lead actor, or let me break it down, a lead actor, lead actress in any movie, you are entitled to royalty by Nigerian law. Others who spoke were Chief Emeka Osai, who talked on the issues and prospects of the traditional media. How do TV practitioners survive these times with the downturn of the economy and um, the fact that our business has become very advertising shy. And I said to him that somehow some practitioners are getting by, but it could be better. We ought to be seeing the business expand further from what it used to be. But unfortunately, um, the advertisers whom I would have put on the spot today if they came, you know, um, when Paul was telling me about this program, he told me that the advertisers would be here and I was going to be interrogating them directly to understand why the natural triangle that you have with TV no longer exists as it should be. Because what, what is the triangle? The source of income for TV production is mostly, is mostly from um, advertisers who are the major funders of TV production. And then, you have, of course, you have the content producers and the broadcast houses. Renowned broadcaster and chairman and CEO of Biscon Communications, Prince Bisiolatilo, commended the host, Mr. Polo Basile, and Nollywood in general. He expressed the light at the achievements of the industry over the years and encouraged them to strive harder. <laughs> Now, let me take you back 40 years ago. <laughs> Paul's father of blessed memories, Chief Patrick Obasi, used to edit the news that the likes of Sonny Rabo, Mani Onumono, and I were reading them, dating back to 79. And when Paul comes to FRC and then, he was hailing us. He was one of my biggest fans then. But things have changed. 
I used to help him now because I like what he's doing. And that, that also extends to you. I worship you, to be honest with you. I don't know if you're keeping the chat with Anna. What I say each time I have an opportunity to do it. I say, you guys have done what the government has not been able to do. <laughs> and we have billions of naira allocated to that. But you guys, please put your hands together for yourself. There's nowhere that I go, I don't hear good things about you guys. And you've done that death, despite government. Oh God, that just shows you that um, the Nigerian spirit is there. And there's no killing it. Do I get a yes from you guys? Yes! Also, the president of the Directors Guild of Nigeria, Dr. Victor Okai, gave responses to questions raised as to whether fame directors are entitled to royalties. Smart producers, what they do is, once you have gathered there, it's pure entrepreneurship. Get the best. There are some people today the world is celebrating. Some of their names were mentioned here today, or at least their businesses. All they simply did, they did not jack about skill. All they simply did was hire the best in every department and got a great director to put everything together. And then what they end up doing is collecting credits. They are the only company makers today. Is that not true? I'm going to see what I'm talking about. And so, I want to encourage us. The director is worthy of his wage. Away from what you get, the royalties you get from ABRS, that movie you're doing, I will say to you, partner with the director, give him some shares, and he will give you his all. You don't have to pay him everything that you think you can get up front. It will, because you might not have much left if you want a great director. But offer him a pass of it. Let him continue to earn. He doesn't take anything away from you. But what it guarantees is you will earn so much more for so much more for much longer. The summit witnessed a grand unveiling of nominees for the Legends of Nollywood Awards. The event ended after the vote of thanks given by the host, Mr. Polo Basile. Biscon Communications congratulates the organizers of the event on the successful hosting of the 23rd edition of the Legends of Nollywood Economic Summit. The official launch of the Peak Performer Platform and Magazine, as well as recognition of 100 highly esteemed executives in Africa, was held on Thursday, the 23rd of March, 2023, at the Musan Center, Unicorn, Lagos. Present at the event were the convener, Dr. Abiola Salami, His Royal Majesty, or Gami Atuashi III, CFR, the 21st Ulu of Wari, was represented by High Chief Gilbert Grant and Chief Luke Ireku. Others were Agbaoye Kola Karim. Mr. Sonny Rabo, renowned broadcaster and wife, Mrs. Betty Rabo. Lady Midian Alex Ibro, MFR, among many others. In his welcome remark, the convener, Dr. Abiola Salami, gave a brief overview of the event and appreciated everyone for being part of the historic occasion. I want to say a big thank you to everyone in this room for being part of history. Um, history, because uh, the Peak Performer is a platform we conceived in November 2021, 2021, um, and we kept building it up bit by bit. What we've done in Champ over time is providing executive coaching and workforce development services, which we are renowned for. Um, some of our clients in Champ are in this room. Thank you for giving us business, you know, since we began till date. And Peak Performer is a new thing we moved into in 2021. And the, the, the support, the acceptance has been remarkable. And please help me put your hands together for everyone in this room who has come to support us on this. Please put your hands together for yourselves. Put your hands together for yourselves. So um, it is indeed a great pleasure to welcome everybody here today. And again, I want to say a big thank you for everyone here uh, for the official launch of the peak performer that we call TPP and the recognition of 100 highly esteemed executives 
not just in Lagos, not just in Nigeria, not just in West Africa, but in Africa. The panel discussion was moderated by Atoyota Aleluya Bobume, also known as Alibaba. The panelists were Dr. Busola Tejumola, Dr. Wale Obadari, and Dr. Charles Otudo. They shared their thoughts on the ingredients necessary for peak performance, why they are celebrated, and the challenges that hinder people from performing optimally. What drives you? What is your mojo? What is important to you? What is that one thing that when nobody is looking, you always stand beside or stand for? In many palaces, it's called integrity. In other palaces, it's called, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, character. Some other people say, you know, what are your morals? Yeah? What drives you? What would you do if nobody was looking? Would you stand by what you said behind the person's back? Would you say it to the person's face? Would you say it with daggers drawn to your neck? What would you do? How would you relate with um, someone who, in your own instance, doesn't measure up to your um, parallel. Um, from my perspective and from the foundation that you have laid, um, just like you have said in the introduction, when you talk about peak performance, really there is no, there is no religion, there is no, there is, you know, you see, it, it is a way of life. And um, I would say it's, for me, it falls under three cardinal point. So to be a peak performer, I think it's about first and foremost, fundamentally, uh, are you doing the right thing, right? That's the first thing as a peak performer. And then if you're doing the right thing, the next in, in the triad is, uh, are you doing them the right way? If you want to take it from the branding point, branding point of view, it's about character. How can you become a peak performer? It starts with what you do every day you wake up. Many years ago, I created the brand book called The Personal Brand Guide. We have the Personal Brand Guide volume 2.0. There's a 3.0 coming up very soon. And in that brand guide, I've trained over 7,000 people. What you should do when you wake up in the morning is just do nothing. Pause. Now, I call it the mechanical strategy. You rewind. What did you achieve yesterday? It's your day-to-day -day activity based on a plan or is it based on the way life runs you every day? It has to be planned, right? So when you wake up in the morning, just pause, rewind, fast forward, then play. If you don't have a plan for the day, you cannot achieve anything tangible. At the end of the day, it's about your plan. To become a, a peak performer, you must have a to-do list. The unveiling of the TPP magazine and launch, which followed next, was led by Agbaoye Kola Karim, the Agbaoye of Ibadoland. We celebrate you and hereby launch this wonderful magazine. A plethora of awards were presented to deserving individuals in various categories for professional excellence. Some of the distinguished awardees were renowned broadcaster Sonny Rabo. Lady Maiden Alex Ibru, MFR, was inducted into the TPP Hall of Fame as the top CEO of the year Africa Award was presented to Agbaoye Kola Karim.
TPP King of the Year Award went to His Royal Majesty, Ogyami Atuashi III, CFR, who was ably represented by High Chief Gilbert Grant and Chief Luke Ireku. The award for Governor of the Year was presented to Governor Babajide Saulu of Lagos State, who was represented by Dr. Akinyaki Pelu. The event witnessed a special performance by guest artist Zadok, a brief birthday celebration for media icon Sonny Rabo. After the award presentations, the vote of thanks was given by the convener of the event, Dr. Abiola Salami, which brought the event to an end. From Biscon Communications, it's congratulations to the organizers on the successful official launch of the Peak Performer Platform and Magazine. <laughs>